place number three. Uh, we are about to commence. Jamie Hall starts on pole position. He was supposed to be doing double duty today, but did not start uh, the uh, previous race, the second race that he was supposed to do, uh, which, of course, was going to be the uh, Clubman's Classics and Breakfast Run Bikes. But he's back out there on the Kawasaki ER650. Brad and Hutchings will be alongside him, and Lance Jonas will join them on the MT-07 Yamaha. Adrian Solomon, always a man to look out for on the 300. It's actually a Kawasaki Ninja 400, but it's classified in the, uh, the 300s class. He's ahead of Abdul Isak, who did a brilliant race in race one. Reynard Burnett, the dark horse. Abigail Bosson always uh, popping around that section, and Max Munton who had a bit of a trying time in race one. But uh, Zante Otto starts once again at the back of the grid, but she came through quite nicely in uh, that first Batek STC 650 and Supersport 300. You want to know why Max Munton uh, had a bit of a difficult start this morning? Oh, sorry, Apparently, um, his bike, I wouldn't say a malfunction, it had a bit of an issue. And um, there was some smoke bellowing from it this morning. But uh, they managed to bridge some wires and get it all done, and he was out racing again. That's why he started from the pit lane. But I think they were going to get that sorted for race two. And I believe they have. Um, and I'm sure he will be out to <laughs> give it to the rest of them. Well, Raymond Alexander gets himself now into position on bike number 11, the Kawasaki Ninja 400. He's a very good, friendly guy, and uh, the cleanup crews actually like him when he's not backing into their, uh, into their vehicles which he did a little earlier on the season, but he took it with some good humor, as he always does. Abdul Isak on bike number two. Also does very nicely on the short circuit scene. That's on the uh, Suzuki SV650. Peter Hill, we haven't spoken much about Peter today on his 650, also Suzuki. Elme Mostad, 11th spot on the grid alongside Mitch Robinson, one of the older hands here at Kalani as far as bike racing is concerned. A number of years, there's Max Munton on the uh, third row of the grid, or as I like to call him, Mad Max Munton. Very tall young man. <laughs> Taller than I am, and he's like, how old? <laughs> well, he's just turned 18 not that long ago, so this is his first, or maybe his second race as an ad adult, so <laughs> good on him for that. And I He's on the grid this time, which uh, should show us some good things, but we wait just a moment. The lights will go on. The bikes rev up, they're on, they're off, and away they go. And it's who can get to Holes Hook first, and Jamie Hall will have the hole shot once again, as he did in race one. This time he started on pole position, and he jumps his way through into the lead with no need for an overtake. But here comes Braden Hutchings. We saw him get ever, ever so close in that last race, right on the last lap. And Bradding's going to say, as you said before, he needed just one more lap. But now he's in the prime spot to just stay on his tail and see him through to the end of the race. Yeah, he's staying glued to the back there of Jamie Hall as they come through Castrol, through Lundstem Corner. Apparently, of course, an, a traditional name that uh, was used for that corner many, many years ago. They go through Turn 3 now, Dampstep, the traditional name of that corner. And the top two already are starting to break a bit of a gap from the likes of Lance Jonas, Adrian Solomon, Abdul Isak, and Reynard Burnett as they go now into uh, the Apex 1 and Apex 2 of Sol sweep and they'll race their way down the Kalani straight to Pertamina Fostron for the first time in this race and the second time today and look at that huge gaggle as they make their way into Fostron they're all going one by one in this moment in time but we'll just wait until they start grouping together and there we see Jamie Hall just leaving Fostron ahead of Braden Hutchings and we see Lance Jonas fighting side by side with Adrian Solomon and Adrian said to me during the qualifying, he said all he wants to do is get past Lance Jonas. So I think that's going to be the main fight in this race. Adrian Solomon still leads out the 300s class as they make their way down the Jubea Strait. And to Castrol Corner. And look at that. Braden Hutchings right on the tail on that back wheel of Jamie Hall once again. Okay. It's about a bike's length, Byron, between the two riders up front. And this is, uh, in my opinion, this is Braden's time to shine. Yeah, definitely it is there, uh, Jordan, as we have now the two classes making their way towards turn three. 
Damn Stip. Jamie Hall, three tenths of a second over the line ahead of Braddon Hutchings. Still keeping them in sight. Abdul Isak, Lance Jonas, then Adrian Solomon. A super, super performance from the 400cc Suzuki. Uh, sorry, Kawasaki, and then Burnett, and then Zante Otto's come up quite nicely there as well, Jordan, to seventh position, a lightning start for the lass on the Quacker. You're absolutely right there. She also said there were, there were a few little niggles this morning with the bike, but she seems to be under control at the moment and doing very, very well so far. But look at this battle. That's Lance Jonas, Abdul Isak, and Adrian Solomon. And they are running it out at the moment for third, fourth, and fifth. Adrian Solomon's just on the back of that train. And now we see a little bit further behind. There's Reynold Bennett, followed there by Zante Otto. Zante Otto with a small stature knows she can sit behind the slipstream and gain up those kilometers, Byron. Top uh, 10 has made their way through now, but the fastest lap of the race, a 124.488 from Braddon Hutchings, a tenth of a second faster than Jamie Hall on the last lap. Look how close they are together when they go into Castrol Corner. Look behind them, Abdul Isak, Lance Jonas, only a five hundredths of a second between the two of them. Adrian Solomon still keeping his own in that group with Reynolds Burnett and Zante Otto, only a tenth of a second off of Burnett in that sixth position. Reynard knew how well he did in the previous race, and now he's got Zante Otto on his tail. And that's not going to be the place that he wants to be. He's going to want to try and ride away from her if he can. But now we watch the battle. That's Abdul Isak, Lance Jonas, Adrian Solomon, and Reynard ahead just a little bit further behind. But this is a hairy, scary battle as they make their way down the Kalani Strait to Pertamina Fostron once again. It's three bikes. Lance Jonas and Adrian Solomon just trade places back and forth and back and forth. As we watch Jamie Hall and Braden Hutchings fighting it out as well, there's battles everywhere, Byron, and I don't think it's going to end until the end of this race. It's what heroes are made of here, Jordan, and we'll watch them now when they cross the line. There will be six laps left to go. As going right through your picture, if you're watching online on the iMuset stream, are our big gaggle of heroes as Jamie Hall dips into the only true left-hander on the circuit, which is Hull's Hook, named for Edgar Hull, the man who founded for Kalani many years ago. But all over the back of him, looking left, looking right, is Braddon Hutchings. It's still three tenths of a second. Look at his sector times. He's been a tenth of a second in almost every sector, except the last one, where he's been two tenths faster than Jamie Hall. But look at that, around the outside goes Adrian Solomon and Lance Jonas. Those are the two most competitive people I know. And Adrian said to me during the qualifying, he said, I'm not going to let Lance go this time around. He wants to get past him. That's his main rival at the moment. And again, they're in completely different classes. But look at the pace that Adrian Solomon has. Sticks as he's known. He can throw that throttle like you won't believe. And he keeps up with Lance Jonas. And it's just going to be a back and forth battle until the end of this race. And we've got just over five and a half, or just under six laps to go. As they charge towards Table Mountain on the Kalani Strait and into Fastron Corner. They'll be making their way around that turn five section. Look how close now. The rest are coming back. And uh, the tight battles between the likes of Jonas, Isak, Solomon, holding it in there six tenths off. Now Zante Otto has made her way up into sixth position. Now seven tenths off of Adrian Solomon. It's a heroine's ride here. Yeah. Now it's wheel to wheel. Two tenths of a second across the line for Hall and Hutchings. Hutchings, a 124.34, a tenth of a second faster than Hall the leader and if they keep pushing each other they're going to get into the 23s as they fight it out into Castro but we look a little bit further back here comes third place man so far Abdul Isak still sitting in the same position and a little bit further behind there there's Lance Jonas and Zante Otto has now made her way up there and she is going to fight her way through Lance Jonas and Adrian Solomon as well with Reynold uh, Burnett just a little bit further behind as we watch them go down the Tigerberg Strait that is the leaders and Braden Hutchings gets past Jamie Hall, as we saw there. And they make their way down the Kalani Strait once again. 
Five and a half laps to go, Byron. That was a very sneaky one, Jordan. He just made it pass quite nicely and smoothly. But Jamie Hall's going to fight him back. I can tell you that much. They charge up now to Fastron Corner. But a more water on the inside of that corner over there as well. Not going to bother to dry, ride as much over here. But look at how they go out of turn five towards the Rumble Strips. And they charge it down the Porsche straight now towards the city of Cape Town. Castrol and Lime Property Management Bridge in the slipstream, in the tow. It is for... The uh, Jamie Hall, will he make a move into turn one? No, he won't. But here comes Abdul Isak, followed there by Adrian Solomon. Zante, Onto, uh, Zante Otto has managed to get past Lance Jonas. And Reynold Burnett is now on the tail of Lance Jonas at this uh, present moment. But now this has moved from a three-way battle and a two-way battle to a five-way battle between third place and seventh place as they all make their way into Castrol Corner. The leaders now are making their way through Dam's Dip. And now it's going to be up to Jamie Hall to try, try and hold out as he got past uh, Brandon Hutchings once again. Another sneaky one there from what you could say, the Black Knights, uh, as far as Jamie Hall is concerned. And uh, that was already two changes of lead now. Look at the sector times. 29.3, two tenths of a second faster in the first sector, matching in the second and quicker for Brandon Hutchings in that third sector. Down the Kalani straight, they will then run. They look like they're going to be coming up to a back marker soon, which is Peter Hill on the SV650 Suzuki. Yep, and that's going to add a little bit of a mix to the mixture, if you will. Um, but I'm sure they'll get past him pretty easily if he moves out of the way. Jamie Hall will sit on his tail for as long as possible to gain that slipstream. And the gap has already widened as they cross the line. But we look a little bit further back, watching them e exit fast run. Abdul Isak is now getting followed there very closely by Adrian Solomon. This was Adrian Solomon's break, but here comes Zante Onto. We know her straight line speed is incredible. And a follow just shortly behind them, it's Lance Jonas battling with that 54 on that Kawasaki ER6 of Reynold Burnett. Coming out of that uh, corner, now we're going to go first now to uh, Holzuk once again. That uh, Raymond Alexander, Max Munton and Abigail Bosson are all in that section as well. And they come onto the Jubé straight and onto the uh, turn two section, Gastral Corner. The right-hander, and it looks like a move's going to be made here. Is it going to be completed? Not quite. So Max will still hold it there. Uh, uh, behind looks like uh, Raymond Alexander. Raymond Alexander on bike number 11. Yep, this is going to be a feisty battle all the way to the end, and they're not going to give up <coughs> on their position to either of those other two riders. They are very, very fierce, all three of them. So it's going to be elbows out, knees out, everything out on the line. With still, it's almost two laps to go as our leaders come to the line now. But we look a little bit further back and there they go into Pertamina Fostron. There we can see the likes of Adrian Solomon, Abdul Isak and Zante Otto. As well as Lance Jonas and Reynold Burnett. The leaders make their way into Holzhook. Jamie Hall followed there by Brandon Hutchings. And that's seven tenths the difference. Now we see this big battle. It's Abdul Isak, Adrian Solomon. Oh, and that's Zante Onto getting very yeah. close there as they all try and pass Peter Hill. As well as Reynold Burnett and Lance Jonas right up on the end of them. You watch them come up towards Castrol now. Uh, Jordan, really the rider of the race here is Zante Otto in my mind. She's been magnificent in this race and only having a lap and a bit left to go as uh, we now come out of Castrol Corner, charge it up through Lundstem and into Turn 3, which is Damp's Dip. And uh, that will be only a lap and a half left to go here, Jordan. Yep, that's completely right. And now we just got to wait and see what it's going to be like right at the end of this race. We've still got a lap and a bit to go. A lap and a corner, if you will, as the leaders make their way into Pertamina Fostron for the penultimate time. Jamie Hoare is sitting out just over a second adrift. Oh, sorry, Brandon Hutchings is sitting just over a second adrift to Jamie Hall out front at the moment. And that was... That was so close right at the beginning of the race and Jamie's just packed up and left. But now we look a little bit further back, Byron. Here comes this gaggle. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. A little bit further behind. It's Abdul Isak versus Adrian Solomon and Zante Onto versus Reynold Burnett. 
Lance Jonas is actually the one at the end of that pack. With a lap to go, we'll see how this one ends up. Ozante Otto crossed the line on bike number 73 in fourth position. Remember, this is a battle for the podium as we now go towards uh, the uh, main straight now, the Porsche straight, 8, 9 and 10. Raymond Alexander, Max Munton just pokes the nose ahead, but now this could be an opportunity for Abigail Bosson. Bosson, will she make it through? I think she has. What a sneaky wow. move. And they'll be looking at each other over here. Raymond Alexander and Max Martin ask themselves, how did that happen? I don't think they can even fathom that themselves in those helmets at the moment. I think there's too much going on. And you don't want to overwork yourself or your mind. But that was absolutely incredible. Three wide into the braking zone. But they'll fight it out as they make their way through the kink and into damn stip. But we look to Pertamina Foster on once again. Look at that gap. That is closer to three seconds now, Byron, between Jamie Hall and Brandon Hutchings. I think Brandon's just stepped off a little bit right at the end. He obviously doesn't have that extra oomph that he would, would have wanted. And he will take second place for the day. But here comes our leader and double race winner for the, uh, the <laughs> Super Sport Twin Cup 650s and, uh, sorry, Super Twin Cup 650s and Super Sport 300s. Jamie Hall followed there by Brandon Hutchings. A 124.074 by the end of that race for Jamie Hall. But Byron, bring this gaggle of four to the line. Well, is it going to be Abdul Isak or is it going to be Zante Otto? It's Zante Otto that gets third position just, just ahead of Abdul Isak by a one hundredth of a second or thirteen thousandths of a second, whichever way you want to put it. Then Reynold Huber, uh, Burnett, uh, Adrian Solomon, Lars Jonas, who's coming across the line? Abigail Bosson will get second in the Supersport 300 class, just, just ahead of Max Munton. Raymond Alexander comes through in 10th position. And then we still wait for Mitch Robinson and Alme Mostert. What an absolute scorcher that was. And I'm not talking about just the heat that we are feeling right now. If you can get goosebumps in the heat, that's exactly what I'm feeling right now, Byron, because that was something else almost almost into the 23s which is something you don't see for this uh, super twi it's super twin cup 650s and especially in these kinds of conditions it is warming up very quickly and i think these are the perfect temperatures for these guys and gals and those bat tech tires well that last lap of course for jamie hall was a 124 207 but the fastest lap overall by jamie hall a 124 074 it just looks like after he took the lead back from Braden hutchings he just decided to check out of there and a 3.2 second gap was between them when they crossed the line but zante otto all the way from the back to third position my rider of the day i think today if we had to ever choose anybody they all were great out there but zante just put in a master performance